Good evening, everybody. This is Adela. Oh, oh sorry. You're listening to the under... <laughs> I'm Dan, also. I'm here. I'm still here. <laughs> you are. All right, I hold on. Let's, let's restart. Ready? <clears throat> <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. This is Sunday, July 8th. It is 6 p.m. I'm Adela. And I'm Dan. And you're listening to the Underbelly Hours. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Wait, hold up. What? They got their coat. Stay a while. Like listening to new music? Want to know a band before they get popular? Tune into the Underbelly Hours, Sunday nights at 6 p.m. on WRSC 88.7 FM. And discover the best of local unsigned musicians. Don't miss out on the next big thing. All right, great start. Yeah. We're doing this. Yeah, <sighs> I got, guess we are. Got my coffee. You got your... I got my green tea. Green tea. Yeah, it's really not that much caffeine, but that's kind uh, of the point right I, now. I double dosed on this yeah. coffee, so... Well, you're listening to the Underbelly Hours if you're yeah. tuning in for the first time. This is our segment on WRZ 88.7 FM where we talk about local music local events, and uh, all that jazz, everything around Chicago, so... All that jazz. Hey! Jazz Woo! You can't see, because we're on air. <clears throat> anyway, we, this is the second uh, week of our Yes Fest Bonanza that we're doing. Um, yeah. Which is, yeah, uh, a okay. specific showcase for um, the Yes Fest artists that are going to be appearing in Elmhurst at the end of the month. Um, yes Fest is a festival that's happening July 27th through 29th this year, and it will feature over 75 artists on three different stages right here in Elmhurst. Uh, and mm. we're showcasing them by showing their music live on air. We have three of them on this time. Yeah. Can you tell us about them, Dan? Uh, yes. Cosmic Kicks. Woo! Actually, I didn't do my research on them. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I couldn't find them anywhere. <laughs> uh, so that's on me. But we'll find about, out about them shortly. Uh, mm -hmm. They're first up. Then we got Cur Bleh. Girl Named K. Girl K. Is it just girl named K or is it girl K? Um, we will ask them when they come on the air later today. There's um, people at our window. They are. So we'll let them in. Trying to uh, sell us something. <laughs> Their music. <laughs> maybe. Hey, maybe. Well, no. Or knives. Well, that just took a dark turn. Oh, you never <laughs> seen those door to door knife salesmen? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. All right. So we have girl K. Well, we have girl K, which and is then, like a little punky. Yeah. And then finally, we have Chelusier, which is not punky at all. So the theme for this... I don't know. Uh, I get, they, they got, like, pop punk vibes. Like, the poppiest of punk vibes. We can ask them about that when they come in. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I heard some uh, Jimmy Eat World melodic yes. um, okay. influences. Yes, okay. And some Motion that. City soundtrack melodic yeah. influences. But, like, more of the poppy side of those bands and less mm -hmm. of the punky sides. But, I don't know, it just made me think of those... Uh, yeah. Well, Jimmy Eat World, actually, I can definitely see influencing their vibe, maybe. Right? So, uh, But that's, again, something I guess we can talk about them later today. So uh, if you haven't noticed, already there's a trend tonight among our bands. We have yeah, we don't know how to categorize these people. <laughs> we don't. That's why I guess they all fall under the record label term of alternative rock. Um, oh, rock. Which is actually our little theme for today. So before we go into the music and showing you guys kind of what... Um, you're about to hear is a live interview. We want to talk really quickly about um, alt rock and why it's a nasty term that nobody should use. What is it? Uh, so yeah, alt rock is actually what is this thing? The actual term alternative rock spanned um, from the late eighties, I think. Yeah, or something. exactly. During the punk movements, actually, it was used to define a type of rock that listeners. Um, could categorize as being different from mainstream rock and that started in underground DIY scenes. Mm -hmm. So it the is first actually... Hipsters. Yeah, really, <laughs> if you think about it. Kind of. I mean, punk hipsters, if that's a thing. But um, they're the first kinds of rock that really um, got popular underground and started to make a living and a decent um, following away from the mainstream, which is why it was kind of um, a little bit of a rival for mainstream media. So when some of the bands from the underground um, from the first alternative rock scene quote unquote started rising up to the mainstream like REM got discovered um, Red Hot Chili Peppers got discovered and from what I understand the record companies saw this as a chance to kind of reclaim or claim the alternative genre for themselves and destroy their rivals in the underground scene by saying oh look hey we got this uh, cool little thing called alternative rock too so they started plastering the label <laughs> yeah 
they started just plastering the label on anything that was loosely rock uh, related and had kind of similar vibes that wasn't like classic rock or straight mm -hmm. up punk or straight up metal and resulted in was, a uh, now what we call like grungy yeah too. exactly so a lot of like nirvana and pearl jam influenced bands all just got thrown under mm -hmm. alternative rock yeah which if you think about it like nirvana influenced bands and red hot chili peppers influenced like those are different distinctly different, sounds. different sounds and yet in the 90s you had all of these artists being plastered labeled as alternative um going into the 2000s and even now um the genre name has stuck around but it's caused like and a really gross uh, yeah, because it doesn't describe sounds. anything. Exactly. It doesn't describe any kind of sonic description uh, to try and help, like, you know, mm -hmm. describe these bands. Exactly. Uh, so what we want you guys to listen for as our audience members today is uh, maybe something that you can, first of all, don't use the term alternative rock when describing rock. And maybe let's start thinking about different ways that we can actually more realistically and accurately define these sounds that you're going to hear from these bands and also in general um, when you're listening to rock and roll because break out the dictionary yeah i mean <laughs> <laughs> there's got to be a better word <laughs> exactly uh than something as vague in general as alternative yeah and with that in mind um i'm gonna actually if you don't mind play one of the first bands that we have um who's not gonna be in studio today um but is also gonna be at yes fest uh they're called press Guile, and uh they're a band out of elmhurst illinois actually they all graduated from york high school and to avoid the term alternative rock i think they're more of like a kind of surf rock uh psychedelic vibe to them mm -hmm. um and they couldn't make it in studio today but i want to shout them out nonetheless and play a song by them uh this is called eyes are windows <laughs> by press guile windows yes on dot 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 to the soul Ooh. Ah! here we go
So that last song you just heard was uh, Eyes Are Windows and then it faded into In Between by Presque Isle. Uh, if you're into that kind of uh, vibey uh, rock stuff, then you can mm-hmm. find them that, on... That alt rock? Yeah, that we're... No, 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 no. no, no. That Remember that. the That's rules right. today. We're not well, using the term alt rock It's frustrating this because studio here. Because <laughs> I heard that sound and yeah. I instantly thought... Alt rock. Alt rock. I know. It's, it's we're ingrained. Yeah. The no, idea definitely. is ingrained into our brains. Earlier we were of, talking about how uh, BS, oh. the term alternative rock is. Yes. Because um, mm-hmm. alternative is very vague in general and doesn't really do anything to describe a sound. It does not. Um, it's much like indie. And they both are Which literally like, means the same thing because right. it means underground music in a sense. Yeah. And that can be anything under the sun. So it's... Right. That's how alternative... The name started was to describe underground independent artists, Correct. and then it switched to indie mm-hmm. sometime like I don't know what two thousands. Yeah, there became indie Probably. rock. Which yeah, was just like another way the record company is trying to trying yeah. to steal away from the DIY. <clears throat> I'm not about it. I'm not about it. But <laughs> you had something cool in the notes where uh-huh. it's like start using decades. Yes, almost as like a descriptor because there is some kind of uh, at least. Uh, I mean. The bands that are not victims of their time, but, you know, mm-hmm. uh, so, you know. Well, the idea is... Um, influenced by their time. Yeah. So to, to, to round off this topic, um, my idea was, I was thinking about this last night. Um, we used to categorize, and we do right now categorize music um, from the 20th century by decade, as far as rock right. goes, and a lot of other music, but like, you know, we got 60s rock, 70s rock, 80s rock. And I really like that because um, you have in between you obviously are still able to classify like the, you know, punk, rise of the punk scene in the Mm -hmm. 80s and, you know, the classic rock sound of the 70s. Um, But labeling something as 70s rock or 80s rock does also kind of um, account for the similarities that people share um, based on environment and political themes of the time and all that stuff because it does influence and create kind of a a sound of the, you know, decade. Yeah, there's some kind of, you know, sonic exactly unity so you have that like vagueness if you need like a vague term to describe music from a certain time period you can do that but it also allows for just individual distinctions as well because like right now we're all indoctrinated to think like kind of 90s 2000s rock is alternative rock um which which is the dumbest thing so why not just call it 90s rock and this is a punk band from, you know, of the 90s rock. It's like a right. little tree and you can well, like... More often than not with like my friends when we're talking about a sound of a band, it's like, oh, they sound like, you know, the 2000s mm-hmm. vibe. And then it splits down into that from like... Exactly. Punky, 2000s, rocky, 2000s poppy. Like mm-hmm. each decade does have kind of a... a feel. Piece. Yeah, a feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was trying to apply like that to now. With bands like Foster the People, well, now Warrens, it's Bird. a little bit difficult to do so in the present. Yeah, just because we are living in the present and we're not, we aren't able to look back over a whole decade and say, "This is like where the this commonalities is more are." Definitive. So, um, decade. Although you are starting to get little bits and pieces of that, I mean, I think there's a strong electronic influence in. There's um, yeah, I'd say there's rock, a strong electronic influence. The new rock bands that are and rising. And a more, more of an emphasis on like tone. Yes. Um, well, hold up. Wait, what do you mean by that, though? Because I'm thinking. Uh, I might okay, be thinking. Maybe not, <laughs> but like, you know, uh, experimenting with sonic capabilities with electronic, like, you know, c- having the... Uh, Pushing the boundaries of how what a traditional rock sound might be with adding electronic influences. Yes, maybe? I guess. I don't know. There's more like uh, synth pads and synthesizers now in the quote-unquote alt rock bands of today. I don't mm-hmm. know. I'm thinking like... Bands like Foster the People and Borns, if you've ever heard of them. Yes. It's still like rock, but mm-hmm. there's much more of an electronic palette over that or as a foundation of it. Electronic colors almost. Yes. I like that idea of it's coloring the landscape. It's not, it's still at a core rock band, but it's like coloring the, I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. I think beans. that's what I was. So get at. basically, what that whole rant was about, guys, uh, listeners, lovely listeners. Um, Alt There's so many BS. different ways to talk about rock than calling it all rock. So don't do that anymore. Uh, and so the next alt rock band we have in the <laughs> studio, <coughs> uh, we have the wonderful Cosmic Kicks who are joining us here today. How you doing? Um, What's up? If you guys right. can uh, maybe just go down the line, explain, like, say your name, who you are, uh, what I'm you do in the band. I'm Leif Dirks. I play guitar and I sing in the Cosmic Kicks. 
Bobby Palmer, at drums and vocals. I'm JP. I play bass. Nice. So. Nice. Cosmic <laughs> Kicks, yeah. guys. Uh, Thanks for being in the studio. Thanks for having, of course, us. Thanks yeah. for having us. Thank you. Mm-hmm. The Ooh. studio. <laughs> we don't really have a studio. It's a studio. It works. Studio? Um, I want like a full live studio. Yeah, studio. Yeah. Well, we're working on it, guys. We're, we're a college radio station. But, um, hey, college, give us money. Yeah, it's so. a great campus. We just we just came here today for the first time, and like I've actually never been to Elmhurst, and it's a great like little community. It seems like so we're really psyched yeah. about it. Yeah. Yes Fest. Yes. I feel like we're in uh, Laramie, uh, Wyoming, right now. <laughs> it's like identical. We came down the street. I'm like, are we in Laramie right now? From yeah. We were there last year playing there with another band. So. Oh, nice. What were you there doing last? What were you doing that last year? Uh, Stay Alive's were playing out there, and that's me and JP were in Stay Alive's, mm-hmm. and then. Uh, Leaf was in a band called Damascellas, and both the bands kind of dissolved in, a, in its own way, whatever happened. And then uh, we met up, and now we're playing together. So nice. It's going on a year, just about pretty close to it. Can you talk a little bit about, about a little bit more about that band origin story? Then, how did you guys with all decide to uh, with Cosmic Kicks? How well, did you Cosmic guys Kicks. all get so to? Then, uh, what you want to go ahead? Yeah, I guess uh, it kind of just all kind of fell together. To be honest with you, we kind of uh, I talked to Bobby at like previous shows because we are both both of our bands uh, mm-hmm. used to play together and I was like hey man I'm like looking for a drummer and he was like oh yeah of course and then uh, one day he just called me up and it worked out nice. yeah I mean it all sort of like fell into our lap we actually mm-hmm. recorded an album before we gigged oh, out cool. <laughs> so uh, yeah we got together in the space and started rehearsing and it was just like we had been a band forever mm-hmm. you know and the Sonically. That's always a good sign. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think when you yeah. can well, vibe Leaf with is, people. Uh, he's a writing machine, so he just just uh, <laughs> you know, it's like uh, it's like the Ford factory. You just have him rolling off the assembly line, right. get in there. He's like, I got five more. I'm like, let's finish up the ones that we're trying to learn right now. Let's yeah, Bob, move on. Bobby and I are thinking about starting a union actually because yeah. it's, it's, it's getting <laughs> I'm, it's getting really <laughs> brutal. I wonder what learn them all now. Four one k. Healthcare. I mean, just, you know, I know we're a new band and everything, but you know, we want to get that all together. So nice. Yeah. So then how did you guys decide on the name Cosmic Kicks? Um, I don't know. I guess kind of just, uh, I, I call, uh, I was calling my ripped up shoes Cosmic Kicks for a little while. <laughs> and uh, it just kind of has a lot of, you know, it has to do with like skateboarding. I keep ripping my shoes up from skateboarding and stuff like that. And we mm-hmm. had songs about skateboarding and whatnot. So I just thought. Hey. <laughs> Dan looked up. <laughs> yes, I did. Are you a skater? <laughs> No, uh, but I would like to do An alternative. Get one. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I tried. I don't have the uh, the balance to do that. Um, but I love, like, the culture behind yeah, it and everything. Yeah. And I hung out with a lot of friends who did skate. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, it's near and dear to my heart. I, I dig it. Nice. It's a really cool, like, community, too. Yeah. yeah. The skateboarding yeah, yeah. community. And the music scene in the skateboarding right. community is really diverse. I love mm-hmm. it. And it's really, really cool. We actually had an opportunity to play um, House of Vans. Oh. Uh, oh, cool. A little while back. Nice. And it was amazing. If you haven't been there or don't know about it, it is just such a cool idea because mm-hmm. Vans basically just created this really cool space where anyone can come for free and skate and listen to music and drink beer. And it's yep. just yeah, like, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> and watch so it was really cool. It was, it was, it was the most perfect combo ever. Yeah, <laughs> they were playing there. So then we played the show there. Right. So that was great. You know, so it was a lot of fun. Cool. So. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, before Skate we or die. <laughs> yeah, before we go into you guys a little bit more about like the history of your band and some of your more influences, um, I want to give the audience a taste of your music. So uh, we're going to start off with a song of yours called "Mine." Uh, so is that cool, Mine? to you guys? Yeah, of oh, course. Yeah. And this is rock and roll, so it's not alternative. Yeah. <laughs> uh, turn your volume up. Rock. We don't need any of those hipster <laughs> alternative folk. <laughs> <laughs> not in this station. Yeah, no wallet chains. Get out of here, right? <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> All right, here's mine by Cosmic Kicks on WRSE 879.
Looking to spice up your music selection? Tune in to 88.7 FM, Elmhurst College Rock Variety, or listen online at www.wrsc887fm.com. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, people. Hey, guys. So uh, that last song you heard was Mine by The Cosmic Kicks, a band from Chicago that we have in studio here today. With the most cosmic of kicks. Yes. <laughs> Actually, let me see those. my kicks. shoes? <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Yeah, look at uh, See, already. Let's show, let's show them to the Facebook. Good. <laughs> we go. Yeah, I was going to say, I've had these shoes for only like three months, too. <laughs> oh, thrashed. Right. So uh, which of your kicks are your favorite kicks? Oh. I can't pick. They're no. they're already ruined immediately, so I can't can't grow attached to any of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. It's a ticking know, time bomb. Not from the stock. <laughs> from yeah, too much. So. Ever yeah. since we started the band, I like my shoe collection the has one? like grown <laughs> like yeah. tenfold. JP's the Imelda Marcos of the band, so he's got he's got close <laughs> to two thousand pairs of shoes. Yeah, well, you know. Is that like half of your uh, gear that you load in is just shoes? Pretty or much, all our ripped yeah. up shoes. All the yeah. ripped up shoes. Like, mm. And then Vans is known for gym shoes. I go there to the Vans and we play it. I'm like, you know what? Maybe there's a pair of gym shoes I can buy in there. And I go in there and it's like, nope. there's, dude, there's no shoes for yeah, sale. Not what, a, what's going on? Yeah. So that's pretty weird. But, so, uh, but at least there was rock and roll. Mm-hmm. <laughs> rock and roll. Uh, not alt rock. So well, speaking of alt rock and the fact that we're not trying not to use that label today, um, what do you guys define your sound as? Mm. If you had to define it, punk rock, rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. There you go. You know, sometimes you don't need like a yeah big flashy term. We're a, we're a, um, I would say it goes from the seventies all the way to now. We're like a little bit of everything, so we're not really. I mean, we're punk, but yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's yeah. uh it's uh very influenced by like a lot of like seventies punk rock, like the Clash and the Ramones and the mm-hmm. Sex Pistols and. Uh, the Dead Boys and so on and so yeah. forth. Yeah, yeah, <coughs> nice. Who is like most ingrained in your DNA? Would you say? And this can be oh, different geez. for all of you. Oh, yeah. Besides my mom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mom. Well, yeah. Mom and dad. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess like for me, stuff like <clears throat> Elvis Presley and David Bowie and uh, the the Clash, the Ramones, mm-hmm. uh, the Cramps, of course, is also a big one. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about you guys? Um. Yeah, like uh, Nirvana, actually. Oh, okay. I th- One of my, like, the, the Clash, the Ramones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Cramps, but, uh, yeah, MC5, things, things like that. But then, like, more uh, contemporary, like, yeah, like Buzz, uh, I think, is also a really good Nirvana. sort of example of it. But, like, okay. in terms of trying to describe, I think, what we do is that, that stuff. But, uh, a lot of yeah, a MC5, lot of bands these students, days things like that. But make then, like, up more contemporary, like, Buzz, for a lack of really like good, energy yeah. and sort of example of it, but like, like a lot of in terms you know, of trying um, digital type additions, right? Yeah, so yeah. like a lot of pedals and stuff. It's just a very <laughs> basic, yeah, very raw, raw yeah. like loud rock and roll. You know what what it used to be like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we uh, yeah. play electronics with testosterone and, <laughs> and aggression. Red Bull and, and, and helps me pissed off at your boss too when you come in. Right <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Good old fashioned like angst. Yeah. 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 Or traffic, you know. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. like, what's going on? Out here? <laughs> Darn it. The fact that on. we like, it, it's so common for me now to have to honk at people at green lights. Like, right really? as they turn green, they don't go because they're on their phone or something. Oh. And I'm just like, all right, I've given you five seconds. I just lay on the horn. <laughs> and that happens to me maybe two or three times a day. See, Wheaton I sucks. never get road rage. So oh, I, I get, don't understand at all. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, Do you guys have any it, songs about road rage or your bosses? Not, I don't. I don't drive actually. This, uh, this comedian <laughs> said that I should have different horn sounds. Like you know, it's like like hey, or just like get out of the way, <laughs> move on, man. Yeah, yeah there's me you know, like <laughs> three different honks <laughs> at least. Like a nice little <laughs> hey, you know, get moving. Yeah. Uh, like a more like some kind of fully aggressive. Yeah, like yeah. a <laughs> one that'd be like super emergency, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and then one that's like you know just really sassy and like dude mm-hmm. like wake up yeah mm-hmm. I think those, like, yeah. don't put your makeup on or something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah something like that or just start playing uh <laughs> <laughs> chop suey <laughs> or wake up don't forget to put on a little makeup <laughs> <laughs> oh no oh man that was that was a good one yeah, yeah I don't try um, at least not for the show. 
kind of circling back to uh, the cosmic gigs, and you. So, what what do you guys write about in your music then, Ooh, for the most part, I or guess it goes, does it change topic it, to topic? Yeah, it's 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 always different. You know? Okay, it's always it's always different, but it's you know, rock and roll topics. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not none of it's too uh, too confusing. It's all pretty self explanatory. Well, we have a song called uh, "Too Poor," and it pretty much explains it all about that yeah, yeah. song. Yeah. It's the, there's messages in there. Yeah, so it's, it's about being too, you know, too poor and you know, <laughs> dealing with stuff. <laughs> but the, the album itself is called Love, and I think that says a lot about yeah, it, too. Yeah. You know, it's like sort of, it's an aggressive sound, but like there's, there's At the a real... At the end of the day, there's love. There is, right? Yeah, there's so, love behind it. And yeah. that's kind of, as cheesy as that sounds, that's what it, it is all about. Well, it's right? more like the lack of, and that's what that's ta- talking about. Like, there's not a lot of that out there anymore with uh, just in the world in general. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's saying, bad. like, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. we kind of ask for it in an aggressive way yeah, in yeah. a sense, you know. Yeah, uh, bringing the love and receiving the love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was going to say some of that angst could come from loving too much and then being, like, imp- not impatient, but, like, frustrated when people are just, like, not reciprocating. Maybe not mm-hmm. reciprocating, but just not living up to their full potential and doing things that are harming themselves or dragging themselves down but you love mm-hmm. them so much and so you just start getting frustrated at them and then it's like ah wake yeah. up yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that'll never get old <laughs> <laughs> that song is actually like a cup of coffee you don't need any caffeine if you play that if you're out of bed you're pretty much ready to go so i should switch that to my alarm song there you go <laughs> uh, so let's play a little bit of your music again. Um, maybe let's talk about, uh, so we ended up with, you mentioned two songs, Love and Too Poor. Um, Love, I think you guys said we can't really play on air because it has a pretty prominent swear in it. Uh, so maybe do you guys want to go with Too Poor as sure. your next yeah. Yeah. song? Uh, and this one's just about being? Just dealing, dealing with being too poor. <laughs> Fair enough. Here you go, guys. was Too Poor by The Cosmic Kicks on WRC 8.7 FM. You're listening to The Underbelly Hours. Hi. Hello. Um, 
<laughs> so. Howdy. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> Radio awesome Land. Of that again. <laughs> Radio Land, what you up to? <laughs> nice. Um, so we talked about the Cosmic Pigs. You guys are kind of like a punk rock feel. Uh, you guys are all about the raw rock and roll energy. Um, is that, um, how do you go about, I guess, capturing that raw rock and roll energy um, into your live performances and also into the studio um, with the albums that you create and the EPs that you do? Like, how do you, how do you, like, do you guys all record at the same time or do you record separate tracks? Um, yeah, what's, so what's the more natural process? process? This yeah. album we did basically live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just in the space mm -hmm. at the same time. Um, and it was really important for me anyway. Like, a, lo a lot of times I think bass players get a little bit of a raw deal in the studio because mm. <laughs> they're just like, ah, just plug in, you know, direct. Right. And then you, and for me anyway, a lot of my sound comes from the amp. Mm -hmm. And it's like what really. What amp do you use? What's that? What amp do you use? I have a uh, Galian Kruger head and a Mesa uh, cab. It's okay. a monster. It's, it's, a, it's, yeah. it's yeah, it's, it's disgusting. <laughs> it's like eight hundred pounds. Oh, <laughs> it would it, it would have ended World War Two way earlier than yeah. it was. So if that was but, used at the time. Um, so. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I have another rig that's a heart key, and like there's just something about mm -hmm. the amps themselves that I fall in love with, right. and I really need that sound to yeah. come out. So. Um, you know, fortunately for us, we've got a really good friend, Scott uh, Herschler, who's uh, out of Joe Quality Studios on, on Montrose. And he's, like, basically gives us, like, free reign. He's our fourth yeah. member. Yeah. 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 So we can go in there and... He's yeah. also an old bass player friend of mine from years ago, a band called Fife Rifle. So yeah. that's how, so we still get the 1980s alternative prices all the way back then. So we <laughs> Honestly, I think he yeah. charged us like $12 an hour. Yeah. Wow. Which is yeah. What, yeah. It, yeah, what it, no, actually, yeah. I think it was 11 an hour. It was yeah. something totally yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, he, and then, he's, he's just a decent dude all together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So super sweet and you know, gave us a great deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's hard on us too, though. He's like, dude. No, I'm like, I think that's a take. He's like, no, it's not. Take in there. <laughs> like, oh, great. Okay. Right. Yeah, but um, uh, when it comes to, like, the energy and stuff, he's seen us live. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm sure, like, when we go in there, he kind of knows what to look for and yeah. right. the sounds to get and stuff. But uh, And then the uh, energy live, it's just, uh, I guess we kind of just let our freak fly and <laughs> yeah. kind of go from there. Yeah, from the sound of it, it feels like it would be the live setting is more natural yeah. and it's, it would be harder to capture that into a, a studio recording, yeah. right. mm -hmm. which I guess recording live would be maybe the, the best the easiest option. way, the there's most no organic. There's no going back. Yeah. Once it starts, the, the button's right. on, there's no turning back and fixing anything, so you can't punch anything back in, so that's the problem with it. But we have to, you got to go in there and be ready. You can't just yeah. be fiddling around and trying to be wishy-washy. You have to be ready to go when you get in there and get it done mm -hmm. immediately, yeah. you know, so... I was like, oh, do I want to play a B here, maybe a C? <laughs> yeah, it's no yeah. time to be sorting things out, so the songs have to be ready. And most of our, some of our takes were one, first takes, mm -hmm. yeah, some mm -hmm. of the stuff. Because uh, once I get going, I'm just like a madman, so mm -hmm. it's crazy. Yeah, and we really, we really practiced those songs before we got in there, too. We drilled the hell out of them. Yeah. So there's not a lot of like overdubs in the no, recording. No. It's just no. full nope. straight. Yep. Just vocals over, you know, like yeah. the vocals over layer and some <coughs> right. sound effects. I think I the think only thing we overlayered was guitar, and it was mm -hmm. just because I was, uh, I'm the only guitarist, so I was just doing like some lead and some of the stuff and a right. little more yeah. rhythm and some of the stuff. But other than that, we really, it was all mostly live. Mm -hmm. Nice. And you guys mentioned that you recorded the album first and then started playing gigs together? Yes, yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is, you know, I wouldn't recommend it but i also wouldn't like want it any other way it just yeah, you know like way, i wouldn't yeah. i wouldn't tell bands to go and do that sort of thing you know mm -hmm. um but because there's something to be said for those songs getting played well the realization you know, on the came road is and when stuff. we realized mm -hmm. we need some material to apply to the to the bars and, yeah, and show clubs people and stuff so we needed some stuff yeah. to get out there and there was nothing so then we had to like let's go in there and do that first and then get that going from there mm -hmm. So. But yeah, like like we said earlier, it's just like it it definitely felt like we had been playing together for a long time yeah. when we first uh, started the band. So recording that album was kind of a no brainer. It yeah, was it like, felt what so organic. Heck, what else yeah. are we gonna do? Mm -hmm. You know. So I'm really glad we did it. But um, the next album, I think, will be a little different. I mean, we'll try to capture a lot of that live sound, but I think we're gonna produce it a little bit yeah. differently. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm How definitely. So? What are you thinking? We uh, we just want it louder. 
<laughs> it's got to be, yeah. And, no, but layer, uh, layer tracks. So JP's got uh, his own isolated situation. Uh-huh. If he wants to go back and and uh, you know layer on it, or we don't like the take, whatever, you can go back and do it again. And right. So it's just going to capture the drums, I think, this time around. It's going to be mm-hmm. it's going to be a heavy album yeah. too. Yeah. So it's going to be yeah. The, our new songs are just yeah. Well, it's going to so, be like really distorted. So with that is there. A possibility of you guys like getting carried away with like all the studio tricks well, and then that might need a another member for a live sound in order to capture yeah. um, what you guys produce i don't think in the it's, studio. it's gonna be i don't think it's gonna be too different from the first album it's all gonna still be super live and organic but okay. i think it's just uh we want to spend a little more time with it you know with the first album like we were like all right we need to get this out we need right. to like show people and stuff for this one we just kind of want to take our time like really listen to it and just kind of have fun with it and you know See I got how it you. goes. So yeah. nothing too experimental. No, no, nothing. Not adding. No, we're not bringing we'll see. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> not adding <laughs> keyboards and cowbells. And <laughs> right. Well, cowbells. Cowbell. You can always add yeah. more cowbells. Marimbas. Oh, you yeah, there's always room for cowbells. Oh, no, I yeah. cowbells. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, that's yeah. cowbells are in there, but uh, no theremins or oboes or anything. Like <laughs> it's actually only cowbells. Dang it. Only a cowbell on Electric bottles. got my theremin. Cowbell choir. That's a theremin, anyway. <laughs> it's that? actually yeah. yeah it's the, oh, that thing. Oh, <laughs> that from, you know, you like play it's actually the... it's a it's an electrified rod that makes noise that they use yeah, for those... scary movies and and, mm-hmm. and the, probably harass your neighbors if you have. One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people who can actually play those things are like scary almost because yeah. it's like it's it's supernatural. You know what I mean? It's some sort of weird magic. Plus, I think I I played one once and it was really fun because uh, this guy was like, I don't know, he just I guess didn't have a natural. Uh, connection with it, so he's yeah. like struggling, and I just go in there. It's like, all right, how do I do this? He's like, oh, well, the right hand controls the volume, and the left hand controls the pitch. And I was like, it's <laughs> <laughs> like you just nice. have fun with it, just start moving, and you figure out the the um like the distance and yeah. stuff. And in which Nicholas it's fun. was like, what the hell's he doing over there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I could see that in a punk band. <laughs> that yeah. that would definitely be something. Um, I'm sure uh, Tesla enjoyed, or would uh, enjoy punk. punk. He, he music. would have enjoyed punk music. He would have. He was um, a rebel. Have, speaking of like punky music, though, have you guys ever played um, any sort of like what we talked about earlier, like alternative underground DIY shows? <laughs> or oh, <laughs> uh, we've we've played a place called the Shack, and that was a lot of fun. First and, show, and that, um, yeah. yeah, that was our first show, and that and that's um, I think it's it's a bit north, and then they, it's just like a. Just a house with a basement. Yeah, and got yeah. Rock the guy and turns bands. his house into a club on Friday and Saturday night. It was crazy. I'm like, what are we going? We're driving. Nice. Yeah, and, and everyone there is always super sweet too, and <laughs> always down to have a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, we'll pretty much play anywhere, right? Mm-hmm. And we definitely want to play like bigger clubs and stuff. That's mm-hmm. obviously the goal. But playing those DIY shows, like, there's absolutely yeah. nothing better than that right. because yeah, people people aren't you know aren't there like for any other reason. I mean, than exactly. to see music, right. you know. You and don't see a cell phone out no, or anything. Mm-hmm. People are just there to see it, you know, and have yeah. a good time. And, and it's uh, it's bare bones basic, you know. It's right. Just, From my experience, it's like the energy is unmatched. Right. Like totally. it's a completely its own thing. Mm-hmm. Not, you can't not get much on the equipment side, a little crappy PA or right. something, and that's it. And you're just mm-hmm. right there, and people are right on top of you. Like, exactly. Right there, right there <laughs> looking right at you. I'm like, dude, you can back off a little bit. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, is there any song in particular, either with those audiences or in general, that you've noticed that um, people really like out of your material? There's a new song called Bored um, that, you know, obviously it's not on this album, but it'll be on the next one. Yeah. And it's just, mm-hmm. it's really heavy. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And there's other songs we've got that, like... Um, like, like The King. The King is always an yeah, energetic a song yeah, play. King is a, that's like a, if a song had a Mardi Gras theme that would be it the king is just like a, <laughs> can't describe, it's like a circus when it yeah. starts just goes right into this mad madhouse just huh. just we're all singing right away and just it's just it's the king yeah. so. mm, cool what's it about well yeah I'll, I'll let you figure that one out <laughs> you'll have to wait for the album re- yeah, 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 release yeah. and you'll have to you'll like, never know yeah right <laughs> your first uh, philosophical yeah, right. song I'll tell you guys when I'm on my deathbed <laughs> All right. So both of those, unfortunately, are not out yet. Um, are you guys in the on process YouTube, of the on board, YouTube? The board's on YouTube on some videos that some guy TJ's laboratory comes on and does photo videos of us. And yeah, it's, okay. a, it's a live video of us playing. Yeah. It. Yeah. yeah, so you can go to YouTube and check that stuff out. 
Nice. All albums on YouTube too, by the way. So if you want to just not buy it from us and uh-huh. cheat us out of our money, <laughs> so yeah. but give us your money to survive. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's also on Spotify. That's what I've been it's saying. On Spotify. Yeah. And uh, yeah. iTunes as well. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anticipated release date for your next like uh, album, or is that still? Um, you guys still taking your time with the that? Hardest we're, question. We're, we're, yeah, like, I know. we're thinking about going in probably here in like the fall when things kind of calm down a little bit. Okay. Uh, but as far as releasing goes, I have no idea. Is your summer pretty question. busy then? He, yes. Yeah, lately. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, all all this month we have, I think we have something going on every weekend. We have, nice. uh, yeah. let's see, we have July 14th at uh, Royal Skate Shop. Uh, it's, a, it's a show out in Lansing. Mm-hmm. And then July 21st, we have a show out in O'Neill's in Lombard. Mm-hmm. And then the 27th, we're opening up for Black Actress at Brower House, and that'll oh, nice. be a lot of fun. So Brower House is fun. Mm-hmm. O'Neill's yeah, yeah. is also pretty, like, yeah, nice. Yeah, right. it's, it's home. And then, uh, and then after that, uh, we have Yes Fest. Yeah, Ooh. we're really Ooh. psyched about Yay. Yes Fest. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah we were uh-huh. supposed to go to Michigan, but I don't think that's going to happen. Uh-huh. Because that, that whole weekend is just getting totally out of control. Yeah, right? it's but getting nuts. What's really cool is, like, you know, when you're in a band, you have to wear a lot of different hats. So you have to be a manager and a right. booking agent and you all that stuff. You got forced into it. I guess it's <laughs> but, no, no, no. But I mean, it's like you, you do what you got to do to try to make a little bit of money, right. you know. Yeah. But it's like, it's been really kind of nice and refreshing because we've been actually getting phone calls now. JP's which like, we're going to play this. I think we're going to play this place, this festival called Yes Fest. I said, Yes is going to play? <laughs> <laughs> in the 70s? Oh, I'm like, man. I'm, that would have been. He's like, No, dude, it just called it. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> that would have been something. Yeah, yes. You guys need to get yes to play. Yes, 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 yes if you're yes 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 fest. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag yes for your yes fest. Yeah, start a That's movement. That's hard to say. Yes for yes fest. Yeah. Yes for yes fest. Yes for yes. yes, for yes, yes. Oh, because yep. There it is. Yes, yes. Say that three times fast. <laughs> um, before, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> but okay, so kind of backtracking just a little bit. Um, the two songs that you mentioned people liked a lot recently are um, both off your upcoming release. Is there anything from your old release that you noticed has like a lot of? Uh, we want more. Gets a, a pretty good, uh, yeah, re- reaction. I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think they all do. It's just, mm-hmm. geez, I don't, I don't know. Or how about which one's your favorite? <laughs> well, I would say would uh, out, of the, out of the album, love and we want more are probably <laughs> my favorite. Hippie grenade is my favorite in that. Yeah, Hippie grenade is a good one too. More. Yeah. What's so. the closer? You guys have a closer song uh, off the album. We or? we want more. Yeah. We, that's yeah. the closer. Yeah. Maybe we should or, play them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or. Um, Remember the names of some of our songs? Jeez. <laughs> it's too many. Uh, <laughs> it's only been a year, dude. <laughs> well, how about this? We'll, we'll, we'll play We Want More, and then we'll, you, you can have we'll a chance to think about yeah, it. Yeah, right. Yeah. There you go. Encore. Encore song. This is uh, We Want More by The Cosmic Kicks on WRC 88.7 FM. <laughs>
All right, guys, that was. We want more by the Cosmic Kicks, the one and only Cosmic Kicks. Or actually, do you, is there another Cosmic Kicks out there? That there you guys have run into. I think there's a rap group or something. <laughs> no, the Cosmic Kicks. So. No, no, I don't think so. There's not another Cosmic Kicks. No. no, but but I know that there is a there is a band out there called like. No, I think there's a, there's a shoe there company. There might be a cause. Yeah, I saw a... Is there a shoe company? I think so. Yeah, yeah. through my research, I saw there was a shoe company and there was some really, like, yeah. bedazzled Cosmic, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. shoe company. <laughs> yeah. Thank God they spell it differently. Free shoes? Uh -huh. yeah. Don't sue me right in there. Yeah, wait, <laughs> like sponsorship <laughs> opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. All right. There you go. Have yeah. the yeah. Cosmic we'll Kicks work wearing out something, Cosmic right? Kicks. We do yes. need money. <laughs> oh. we'll use their, your song in a commercial. All right. Well, we had we had T-shirts, we had stickers right away without even. I mean, we had like the album ready to go, stickers, T-shirts, pins. Mm -hmm. uh, nice. So you were set. That's crazy. Yeah. So Are these like all the, available? In, do you have like a website where you can buy this album? No. Off of, or is no. These just throwing, we're Facebook just throwing them out at people. Just call yeah, me. Facebook. <laughs> we're throwing them to people too. The album and everything. Just like you can buy it, but we're giving some. Yeah, stuff we away. usually give them out at shows yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. cool. Someone comes up yeah. and says, "Dude, you know," and we're like, "Yeah, here, dude." <laughs> but we are working out uh, a way to get a website and get mm -hmm. all that together. So mm -hmm. hopefully mm -hmm. soon we'll have all that available. Squarespace is pretty good. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's a. I mean, it's like probably twelve dollars a month. You pay it once a year. Mm -hmm. right. uh, we're not ever, or we're not sponsored by no, Squarespace, no. but yeah. just <laughs> my own personal experience. It's uh. So we would good. like to be sponsored by Squarespace. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, is, that they, they, is that an alternative sponsorship? Or is that <laughs> oh, you son of a! <laughs> <laughs> How dare you! I, I never liked that term. Anyways, uh, uh, the pumpkins back in the day, Billy would announce like, "Did you come here for a rock show?" And then and they would they go, "Yeah, well, you're in the wrong place. It's an alternative show." I'm like, "Dude, it's rock and roll." Yeah. way at the end of the day, so Billy like, Corgan. Was he being sarcastic? Uh, oh, Billy. I would hope that he was being sarcastic. I don't think he... I don't, he no. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It didn't seem <laughs> that, like it, but that was that the man. Records back in the day when he was doing a live show on, oh, on an XRT. And, you know, and it's, they still play that once in a while. You hear them say that at the beginning, you know? Did you, oh. guys, did you guys know that Billy Corgan had a um, tea shop? What? Yeah. In no. Highland Park mm -hmm. or something like that? I went okay. there once with my girlfriend. Was it he good? Was there. Is that it still was good. The, it's called. It was called Madame Zuzu's yeah. Tea Cellar. Is that still open? No, he no, closed yeah. it. I mean, he's on. Like, he's I, th on. I thought it'd be something like Alternative Tea or something. Oh, like that. oh. <laughs> oh. Dude, that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Sorry, dude. I'm just gonna rub I it in. That was right? a lot funny. That was that was good. But <laughs> Thank you. Now we have to end the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's a yeah. He was there, and I met him, and um, it's just strange, like seeing him in the flesh. He's like a really tall guy. Yeah, he's a giant. And uh, I don't know. I shouldn't say this on the radio, but there's something <laughs> oddly like phallic about him. <laughs> like he just he he just looks like a big. <laughs> Uh, all right. Right. I'm penis, sorry, but, but he's just, yeah, I mean it's not <laughs> a swear. Yeah, penis isn't. No, it's not. It looks like a giant penis. Yes. Oh, a oh, penis go. isn't a swear. Yeah. Penis. Yeah. Penis. All right. Penis. Well. All right. Well. <laughs> anyway, on that note, <laughs> that game. leave it on to the cosmic note. kicks to paint that <laughs> disgusting image in your mind. Elmer's was I think never we the same. lost. I think yeah. we lost someone on the Facebook feed. <laughs> yeah, I think we lost everyone. They're like gross. That was now, cool. I'm really men, sorry. So They're like not now. cool with penis. Every time I hear today, I'm just gonna think of singing. <laughs> oh. um, I bet Billy Corgan's listening to this. Actually, I would be. He yeah. tuned out. He's gonna find me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's actually interesting because we only got like two and a half minutes left with you guys. So um, oh, that's a good way to end. It. This is actually a pretty good way. To end this um so can you guys maybe plug your stuff one last time and what pick a song that you would like to uh oh, have your send off do, uh, song then. let's do hippie grenade yeah hippie, hippie grenade. grenade's good All yeah right. check us out on facebook cosmic kicks k-o-z-m-i-c um oh. and then uh come check us out at brower house on july 27th with um black actors yep good. or yes fest july yes fest yeah yes uh, a little shout out to sai out there listening right now just come oh, here oh right sai 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 Nice. So yeah, about you, Sai. We love you. All right. This is Hippie Grenade. And we'll be right back with some more interviews, this time with Girl Kate and later on Chelsea. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm.